Hi, that's because we don't have an intro song. I just realized we should probably have an intro song. I'm going to put together an intro or at least give you a performance in the beginning of the show. We need something. We're still putting it together. But hello, everyone. My name is Peppermint and my pronouns are she, her, hers. And you are watching Pep Talks. The interactive weekly interview show, which covers hot topics and commentary on notable Black cinema throughout her story. And each week, I invite you to throw on your PJs, mud masks, and get comfy with me and my celebrity guests, where we dish our takes on the movies, drama, and our favorite trends and products. Now, this is a celebration of everything that I love, makeup, Black culture, and connecting with each and every one of you. Now, I will... I'll be in the comments, but I can't find my phone. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I'll be in the comments, uh, you know, checking out what y'all are saying uh, in the chat. So if you see me looking down, then you know that's what it is. And just for the record, whenever I'm looking down, I'm obviously looking at my phone, but it always has something to do with the show. Usually I'm on some kind of show where we're like trying to figure out what the girl wore on the runway or whatever. And that's what I'm looking at, y'all. I got a little bit of flack last week. Um, anyway, so today my guests and movie are James Mansfield, my season one, season nine, RuPaul's Drag Race sister, and Foxy Brown, a the the quintessential black exploitation movie. Uh, but before we bring on James and get into it, um, I got to tell you, I am so over prescription drug commercials. I've been sitting in this house all quarantine looking at these commercials and they are getting out of control with the side effects. I mean, the commercials are always showing people laughing and frolicking in the field, sprinklers going off, maybe she almost trips over a pine cone, whatever, rolling around in the bed, smiling. And the announcer is straight up on the microphone saying, side effects include uncontrolled muscle movements, increased weight gain, aggressive bowel movement, sudden death, like, what is going on? <laughs> I think it would be more, honestly, it would be more realistic if they showed someone actually dealing with those side effects. Like, let's show it. If we're, if we're going to have a spasm, show it. And then we know what we're in for. Anyway, okay, that might be a little bit overboard for TV. But now it is time for us to welcome my guest to the show. I'm so excited. Haven't talked to this bitch in forever. Make some noise and welcome to the show. James Mansfield. James, what are your pronouns? Oh Mama. my God, it's James Mansfield. Yes. <laughs> well, I prefer she in drag and he when I'm not in drag, just because I put on the voice, just, you know, you know, humor me, I guess, you know, <laughs> pretend. <laughs> Ain't nothing pretend with James Mansfield, honey. Ooh, I love now, it. Before, I love before it. we jump into it, if you are watching on Twitch or YouTube or Facebook, Check the link in my description or my Twitch profile to leave a tip to to support the production of the show. Uh, the show is obviously free to watch, but it's not free to put on. So please donate by hitting the tip button so that we can bring you the very best every single week. Running here, all some coins. I'm looking at their decor right now, and it's sad. This one can't even afford a light. Who me? No, Ray. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's just sitting there in the dark. Sitting there in the dark. I think it's because the sun is going down in California. Don't let the sun oh go down God. on me. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let your sun. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, quick, quick, serious question. What was that? Did anybody hear that? Tremors? Tremors? Okay. <laughs> serious question. On the wall. Toilet paper, over or under? Ooh, one of life's most burning questions. I would have to say I am an over person because I like chaos. <laughs> Ooh, you like, renegade you. Especially at a guest house, you just like flick it all the way down. <laughs> it fills up. 
<laughs> um, okay, besides what you already have going on, which is your fabulous YouTube channel, uh, where you have many um, videos, and I'd say a ser series of videos that, that educate the masses on not only drag history, but also uh, just pop culture, really. Um, besides that, and your fabulous wig business, um, if you could open a different, a completely unrelated small business, uh, what would it be? A store, like some kind of agency, a school for the young lady, who, what? Ooh, a small business that's not really the drag. I mean, that's so hard because I feel like everything is affiliated with drag at this point, isn't it? It's like, true. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can find a drag queen accountant now. Ugh. You can, Karen from finance. Oh, it's shoot. <laughs> There we go. I'm not going all the way down under for that, though. Good Lord. Good Lord knows what their tax situation looks like. Oh, that's what I'll do. I'll learn about taxes, because that's one thing drag queens know nothing about. Yeah, we're so bad at, you know, that is the truth. <laughs> um, lash it right off. <laughs> I don't know. I still, I might have to wait for a couple, a couple tax seasons to make sure everything's on the up and up with your tax business. From wigs to taxes. <laughs> Um, okay, so here we go. Here's a statement. I want you to say the statement and then fill in the answer. Okay. You can't tell by looking at me, but... Da, da, da. Hmm. I am a natural blonde. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we could probably tell if we looked somewhere. <laughs> Not with my manscape handy, you can't, all right. <laughs> oh, oh wait, is that now I can see on the table behind you. Is that what that is? She's always plugging. I am practically James Manscaped at this point. Oh my god, that's the best. I told him, like, if you up that check, I will change my name. It'll happen. You know, we bought. <laughs> a lot of people have been using it. How do you like it? Tell the truth. And crying minds want to know. I was a disgusting, bustling forest down there, and it is now trimmed, and it's under control. It's like a well-kept lawn, you know? It's good now. It's good. We're in good hands. And they have they have this ball, ball cream, ball, ball, something for your ball. They really like the word balls. Yes, yes, yes. They're very binary over there. Um, I will say I haven't really used the creams, but I do like the products as far as shaving goes and the nose hairs, because I could never get that under control. You know, you have got this orange is tart. So oh, sorry, so rude of me. Hi. Um, do you have a do you have a drag mom? Me, I oh, this, well, not to bring down the chat or anything, but I had two drag moms. Um, the one was Rudy D'Angelo. She was a famous, well, she's a pageant queen in Milwaukee, and she sadly passed away. Mm -hmm. But she was gorgeous and gorgeous. Like she was the one that was really hands on and told me a lot about like you know drag life and how to survive in Milwaukee and how to you know handle the queens. And I had another queen that was on the West Coast named Ruby Claire, the amazing Ruby. And she was also very, very informative and giving me like, you know, pep talks on the right. life and how to go about being a drag queen. And I feel like what they really preached the most was, you know, be yourself and be respectful of our industry because no one else is. Oh, you know, maintain and it. It's true. Especially, I mean, there's certainly people from within who who we look at and we're like, okay, I think that once you've been doing it for a while, the the other queens in the industry, like people kind of start to understand the camaraderie and start to respect the industry. But there certainly are people from outside of the industry who, before Drag Race, I'll definitely say, yeah. um, were not very respectful of the industry and were and of drag artists and didn't really, I think, really didn't view us as like actual artists just viewed yes. us as like people at the bar who they could like say nasty things to. I bet you probably experienced this firsthand living in New York and seeing so many productions come in and out, like just pick and choose what they wanted to show about drag and put it on film and screen and never really mm -hmm. explore the story and what it really is and what these people truly do. It's that's of course it, it happened so much and they would kind of come in with their idea of what they thought drag was or I guess should be which was like this boiled down and like, you know, not that 
not that RuPaul's Drag Race is like the most deep of anything I've ever seen on TV, but in terms of drag, it really does give people yeah. a much larger view of the person behind the makeup and the wig, you know, um, at least that's my opinion. Um, all right, let me check these comments. Now, is there anybody here who, if you're not subscribed to James Mansfield's uh, YouTube channel, do it right at this moment. That's shame on you. <laughs> shame on you and shady bitches. Um, I'm going to keep it up in the comment, keep keeping it up in the comments. Um, but while I do that, head over to my Patreon channel, uh, which we will put in the comments right now as well. If you'd like to see me and James Mansfield talk about the worst meal that she ever made, her biggest pet peeve, and what James wishes hadn't been edited out of Drag Race. Uh, also, what kind of drag queen she is. Hello, 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 hello. Now, I have a celebrity question that was submitted for oh. you by our friend in common, Eddie D Edward Danger. Eddie oh. Danger. <laughs> uh, James did a residency in Provincetown one summer. Given her interest in queer history from her early YouTube series that I mentioned earlier uh, and the great tradition of P-Town, one woman drag shows, did she feel intimidated putting together a show alongside the likes of the legendary Varla Jean Merman? Hmm? I will say I actually got to do P-Town before I did my residency there. I got to like do a test show to see how it'd go and it was a P-Town audience of all locals. And it went over really, really well. So I came into my residency with a really high confidence. Basically like, okay. oh yeah, this is going to be great. Like, it's a piece of cake. And you know, it's being an entertainer too, where it's just like, you can't focus too much energy on what other people do. You only can worry about what you bring to that stage because that's what puts people in the seats at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I was never really concerned about that because at P-Town, it's just like every girl in the world goes through there. Um, I'd never get on stage if that was something that like brought me down. And... To be fair, like the P-Town show, I wish it had gone better. It was sadly, you know how it goes, creative and contractual differences. And the show did not continue. But I'm not mm. putting a total nail in the coffin on Provincetown. I still love performing. And, you know, once the world opens up again, maybe I'll perform some more. <laughs> Hello, I would bring you out, honey. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm terrified by P-Town. You know, I've really? been there once and I've never done a show there. And I mean, I'm... I would, like, I would do the show, but just the idea, I mean, I, 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 I don't, I don't can really consider myself lazy, <laughs> but it, the, the idea of people. all of this, <laughs> yeah, let's ask others, the, the idea of, of doing a show with all this stuff that was involved is involved with a show in P-Town just felt like, oh, it's just like, bless those, bless those queens. Oh, you know, girl, I was coming from the city where it was just like, you want me to do what? I have to stand on the street and hand out flyers? Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Woo! No, darling. Um, I don't even know how to say this, Rife. Maybe you can help me in my ear. Can you try this person's name? Earn the Fern. Okay, Earn the Fern. Okay, look at Rife. There he is. <laughs> Earn, say it. Earn the fern. <laughs> earn, but there's an I in it. Okay. Earn like, the fern, who is a patriot. Oh, this is, earn the fern is, where is this from? Twitch. That's from Twitch. Okay. Hey, is uh, James looking forward to getting her hands on Bob's red wig? Honey, that red wig, let me shut up. Let's hear what James has to say about this wig. Before you came into the chat, I actually was talking a little bit with Mitch about this, where it's just like, at this point, I'm not intimidated by any wig that comes my way. So let her send me that wig. I'm sure I could turn it into something. And, you know, at this point in the game, it ain't much to work with. But I feel like I can take, I can make something out of that. I really can. I honestly think I could. You can <laughs> make some. the 400K first. Honey, that, that, I'm sorry. I don't, <laughs> it's not my favorite hair. I don't know what's going, let me shut up. I will say I just love Bob and her bravery to wear anything. Wow, that was such a loving read. 
Okay, this is this is a Patreon question from Ashley Kusu. And I want to say thank you so much to all of our Patreon members who help keep the show alive. Um, and so from Ashley Kusu, thanks for your patronage. Uh, love you both so much. Would you be interested in participating on All Stars? Oh, would I be interested? Um, again, it's like I never closed doors in my life. I never shut off opportunities for myself. It's up to them if they want me. And I'm sure you could agree with me on this more. It's just like, if they ask, I probably would consider it, but I'm not going to hold my breath. And I starting to live my life to get back on that show. We got other stuff going on. I got other show. Yeah, and I, I, that's exactly what I say. Like, I would love to go on as well. I feel the same way, you know, but we, we have to, the, the thing that the show does is pro provides us with a larger platform than we probably would have had had we been on the show. And I think everyone who you can see who is, making content, creating videos, doing a story, auditioning for a thing, getting on TV, making, doing something, having a wig business. Everyone that you see doing that is making the most of their platform and is really grateful for what they've got. Everyone doing those things. Um, and so we, we're not going to stop and like take off our hair and hang it up and lay down and, and die until they call us. We're going to keep going, you know, you gotta, in the meantime, um, December Artist, another fabulous Patreon patron, thank you so much, December, uh, asks, what has been your favorite wig that RuPaul has worn on the main stage? And RuPaul has some wonderful hair. I remember our very first season, I mean, when we were on our season, it was a little shaky in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For reasons, for reasons, yeah. <laughs> reasons, reasons. But what is uh, Ruth? Uh, do you as you have a, a hair? She kind of has like six or seven like main kind of pieces that kind of are the same styles. <laughs> if have you noticed? I don't know if you noticed that. Very big on like the bouffant with the flip in the front, that kind of jam. Mm -hmm. I have to say, I really love when she like channels back to her old days. Like she'll do like the updos, like the supermodel mm -hmm. updos, sort of like today, but so like kind of like this one. Uh huh. Yeah, I love when she like does callbacks, especially now she still can fit all those goddamn outfits. The bitch, oh my god, god. She walks <laughs> on like the v the RuPaul show outfits now. I'm like this is insane. It's the same. These are like Mackie. They're not Mackie now, but like you know, she could probably she could fit into those same things. Makes me <laughs> um, There's a new panel in the back that we can't see, but she can fit them. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I gagged. I mean, I don't, it was definitely like, probably, I don't, I, it might've been around like our first like elimination episode. Um, I gagged finding out that she was wearing sweatpants <laughs> behind the, I, I mean, of course it makes sense. And I'm the first queen to take off her, her heels, but I gagged finding out that she was wearing sweatpants. Y'all, RuPaul is not wearing those dresses all the time, the oh. whole time. I'm here to I tell it. Slippers. <laughs> <laughs> and we're sitting up there in like six inch heels dying. Well, other girls. Hello. <laughs> um, let me go back into the comments. Panda O'Doom. Oh, I lost the comments. One second. Panda O'Doom. Come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Panda O'Doom says, these queens know the hustle doesn't stop because the cameras aren't, aren't on, aren't rolling. Wait, aren't or stopped aren't on or stop rolling. That's the truth. Thank you, Panda yes. O'Doom. <laughs> um, would it bother you uh, if you are Nelson DePina, I'm sorry, Nelson DePina, another fabulous patron uh, who always has questions to ask and they're always quite deep. So get ready. Yeah. <laughs> um, would it bother you if your talent of doing hair overshadowed, see what I'm saying, bitch? <laughs> This is, this is, this is, this is, this is like some, this is personal. Would it bother you if your talent of doing hair overshadowed your talent as a drag queen? For I mean, instance, <laughs> wait, there's more. There's Scroll more. Up, okay. Right? For instance. I can't, it's frozen. Oh, Lord. I guess we'll never know. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll never know. Oh, there it is. For instance, if someone said, more, 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 next page. Uh, oh, hey, that's James Mansfield. 
she's amazing at doing hair instead of, oh, hey, that's James Mansfield. She's amazing at being a drag queen. This is some shady stuff. Oh. <laughs> um, I will say, like, I'm not a person that denies my own truth. I'm well aware of the fact that I've been kept around as long as I have because of my ability to style wigs. And I'm not ashamed of that. It's something I learned and I learned how to do it well and at least to a point where I can talk about it confidently and know I'm not steering people the wrong way. So I feel like the fact that I incorporate the drag with it, I'm always in drag when I do it. It's never ever a case where I have to worry about it overshadowing anything. And at this point, girl, half the time my wig videos are just me talking about like whatever I'm interested in. I don't even do like hairstyling tips anymore. I give up, talk about old Hollywood or movies I've seen. So like, I don't know, that wouldn't bother me. And again, as someone in show business, you're always happy if someone's talking about you for something. Let it be something I remember for. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's one of the things that like people don't, um, when when people, I, I think that when people compliment our, our drag or someone's drag, you know, ultimately they're talking about their skill for either makeup or hair or one of their skills in like the drag arts. And so one of the things that I think that most drag entertainers don't like is to be pigeonholed just because we are drag entertainers. We want you to recognize our other skills that we bring to the table more than just being in drag. And so I think, you know, that's a, it's a great question um, and obviously a, a fabulous answer. And you heard it right here, people. <laughs> um, Master and so, ever meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so you actually, I'm really excited about our, our movie today. We're going to get right into it. I, I hope that some people watch this movie. I know we didn't give you much time. Um, we will be choosing. And um, Rife, if you can text me um, the choices of the movies. So I have them. Um, we will be announcing the next week's movie tonight. So you have seven days to figure it out and watch the movie. We know that you didn't have much time, but what I would like you to do is watch this movie tomorrow or tonight or later when you can, because it's very, very good. I'm talking about Foxy Mother Brown. Okay. Yes. Not the um, and, I'm the firm. Yes. Oh, honey. Yeah. Nice. Not uh, hello. <laughs> um, but she she got her name from it. Um, and this is a 1974 movie. The synopsis is uh, someone unable to pay back their $20,000 uh, money that, that he owes to the mob. Small time hustler Link, uh, played by Antonio Fargus, instead gives up the identity of an undercover cop, Terry Carter, who happens to be dating his sister, which is so shady. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, his sister Foxy Brown is, and and he so he basically turns in her his his sister's boyfriend, um, and when gangsters later kill him, Foxy is quick to make the connection. Now let me tell you, the thing that you don't know is he's basically like this undercover cop who's like in this witness protection. Didn't he? He got plastic surgery to change his face, right? Yes. Is that true? He did. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and it has that great scene of Pam Greer like starting to make love with him in the ho hospital, and they get yeah in the hospital. No, no. And then the um the nurse comes in and smacks his, his I was like, oh um anyway, so he is, he he went through all these great lengths to to disguise himself and to have a new identity. And then the the gangster gives him up anyway. And so anyway, uh so the cop gets killed. Uh Foxy is quick to make the connection uh and swears vengeance on the killers, the mob killers. Basically, it's not it's the mob, but it's like some it's a, like a mafia by this woman. It's a not really like the entire, yeah. it's a drug ring. Yeah. Um, anyway, so this was your idea to watch the film. I'd seen it many, many times. It's one of my favorite black exploitation, favorite movies from the seventies. Frankly, it's my favorite Pam Greer movie. Oh yeah. Um, and yeah, so let's talk about it. What What was the first time you saw Foxy Brown? I actually saw Foxy Brown when I was way, way, way too young to actually be watching it. I bought the um, VHS copy of Pam Greer where she's under the bridge with the green jumpsuit and the gun. And I didn't yeah. know what the movie was, but I was drawn to it. And I watched it. And like, just when you see that opening scene with the green screen and Pam Greer dancing in front of it. Oh, so oh my God. It's like, this, it's like the original, uh, even this reference is too old for y'all, but the original iPod commercials had a silhouette with people dancing and they were all happy because they had an iPod. Um, and that's what it reminds me 
you could just superimpose an iPod in her hand and it would go. <laughs> it would totally go. Um, yeah, the first time I saw it, my mom introduced me to Pam Greer. I was probably a, a young teenager and I don't even know how I watched the movie, but she was like, she had me watch this Foxy Brown and uh, Black Mama, White Mama. Have you seen Ooh. that? I've seen it a long time ago, long, long yeah. time ago, but I do know the premise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Two ladies chained together. Um, and so, yeah, that's what my mom had me watch. And so I fell in love with it, absolutely. And it's really interesting because the, what people don't understand and, and people who watch this movie may see the connection or at least a similarity between this and another movie that we watched recently, Truck Turner. Um, yeah. It's all about vengeance, uh, you know, kind of vigilante. That's what most of the black exploitation films were. And they call them black exploitation because these were um, black films, but they were notoriously not created by black folks. They were created by studio heads who wanted to cash in on the black dollar, but didn't want to risk putting black folks in mainstream movies. And so they would create these movies and then most of them, not all of them, but most of them. Um, and they would, you know, have just, you know, they wouldn't have the highest budget um, and they wouldn't have the widest audience, but then they would always become these cult classics. Um, and so anyway, so Foxy Brown, uh, you know, she's a vigilante. She's, she's, She's skilled in the art of um, black belt. Or she got her, her black belt in bar stools. Bar stools. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Knocking out lesbians in a bar. Which I absolutely <laughs> love. That, that lesbian bar scene is one of the greatest things <laughs> ever. It was like one of the earliest sights of a lesbian bar in a movie. And it was, it was convincing. <laughs> I love it that. was quite convincing. I mean, there was there was definitely some lesbians in that bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let, I, not, you make a great point about black exploitation films. And like what I love about Foxy Brown, especially with Pam Greer's presence in it, is like this is this technically the sequel to Coffee. It was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. But they decided sequels were a no-go, so they launched it as Foxy Brown instead. And Pam Greer was such a star at this point where she had creative liberties with everything from her wardrobe to even like making changes to the script. So like a lot of the great little touches you see in it were Pam Greer's ideas, like with the coat hangers, that was Pam. Oh my God, was she, oh my God, she <laughs> got, she made great a hook out of these face. <laughs> Listen folks, let me tell you, if you ever see a movie or a show or a, a skit or anything where someone has a huge Afro and then reaches into their afro to pull out a weapon, it came from this movie. <laughs> it just did. <laughs> There's so much, like Pam Greer in this movie, I saw it now, I, I watched the re-release of it where it's actually in high quality because we mm -hmm. got that horrible VHS copy. Horrible VHS, oh so honey. Dark, you can't see anything. Mm -hmm. Seeing Pam Greer with the way she was meant to be seen, like in full blazing color, high quality, the beautiful wigs and costumes, ugh. It was so good to watch it again. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have to watch the HD version because I still have the VHS tape. <laughs> Girl, how do you watch it? You have a VHS player? <laughs> Girl, I have a, I don't have a VHS player anymore. I watch uh, what looked like a dub of the VHS tape, which is like not the HD version. I don't know. I watched it. Full cinema re-release? My cousin sent it to me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What did you think oh, of uh, speaking of Pam Greer, who being a big star? What did you in that you know in that moment in time? What did you think of? What did you think of the acting? It had, I would say, I wouldn't call it an all star cast, but the people that were in it um, were especially Anthony, uh, who, who plays Link, her brother Antonio. Um, he was in all the black exploitation films, and he, most he notably, people Starts probably, much? huh? He was Huggy Bear in Starsky and Hutch. It's probably his most famous role. Yeah, probably his, I was just going to say that, probably his most famous. Um, and then, you know, the, I think the, the like, the queer um, moment that, like, kind of people kind of remember as well from him is in, um, uh, wow, God, now I can't remember what movie it is. Car Wash. Yes. Car Wash, Car Wash. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like my brain almost flew off my head. Um, so said, what like, did you think of the acting? acting like one of those movies. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of the acting and the performances? What I still say about like a Jack Hill joint is that 
he was one of those people that took on these like black exploitation films. He was given them as a like you know a chore to do for the studio so he could make movies he wanted to make. Mm-hmm. But rather than just make a garbage movie, he based them on like Shakespearean plays. Like mm-hmm. Coffee is Richard the Third. I can't remember which one Foxy Brown is based on, but he took all the actors he worked with on like previous films, like Antonio Fargas and Pam Greer, and put them all in his movies. Like they all have the same cast. And what I like about it is like. They have a Shakespearean quality to them, and you can tell they truly want to make something that would be remembered. Yeah, <laughs> you could, you could, you could totally tell. Um, and so, what about the the storyline? Because that that's one of the things that's really interesting. Looking back now, we can see the um, it, the the writing and the, the sort of the, the archetypes and like you know the basically black drug dealer criminal like everybody's in crime. Um, those are kind of the kinds of roles that I think many actors these days are trying to get away from, or at least not always write or be stuck in. Uh, but during black exploitation, during the seventies, a lot of the roles, whether they were in black exploitation films or not, that black folks were playing were the drug dealer, the pusher, the junkie, you know, um, do you think this storyline like holds up today, you know? Well- I think it's often overlooked about black exploitation films and things like Foxy Brown and Coffee is like one of the overlining storylines in it was that these neighborhoods had to police themselves because the police weren't helping. Mm. So they were banding together to get rid of crime in their neighborhoods and to rid the streets of crime because cops and higher authority weren't going to help. And I feel mm. like that was a really great message to send, like saying like basically if you're not going to help, we're going to just get it done ourselves. And that's one of the things I love about Foxy Brown is like she gets wrong so many times and so much crap happens to her that is messed up. But Pam Greer always comes out on top. Like she does persevere in this movie and they make her suffer a lot. They and really, I, I mean, they, they torture her. They don't make her suffer. They straight up torture her. And one of the biggest fears, I, I don't even like to talk about it, but I have a, I have a fear. How did my necklace keep moving around? Uh, I have a fear. <laughs> I have a fear, um, and it comes from this film, um, which is being kidnapped and then taken to a a crack house, smack house, and being drugged up. And so they took her and put, they drugged, they doped her with heroin. They inject her with heroin, and it seems like she's there for a few days at least, and they, they get her on heroin, and she's stuck on heroin. And it, it scares me to death. Like yeah. that whole scene, like it feels like it goes on for ages. It's so terrifying to watch in today's yeah. lenses. But like she definitely makes them pay for the shit they did to her. Oh, yes, she does, honey. When she says, she, he's like, it's gasoline. And she's like, you know it, motherfucker. <laughs> yes. I think it's a thing I used to reenact that. Hose. Re-enact it. that. hose. <laughs> what, wait, what? What? Like funneled it through a hose in her oh, she, mouth. Yeah, she siphons it through those. She <laughs> sucks that gasoline out of the tank. Siphons it through the hose, gets it in her mouth, and spits. She's drinking gasoline because she's going to burn these people to a crisp. It's terrible, but she's going to do it. And she sneaks in the house and gets them with, and she, what does she call him? Hey, honky? Or does she call him something else? I don't remember. Uh, she does drop the F bomb a lot in this movie. I will say that, but I don't know if it was yeah. that update later. But like, um, yeah. But I, what I will say, like, I didn't have an adverse reaction to that scene. One thing I will say, I didn't fear getting my house broken into because of Pam Greer, because I learned that wire hanger technique where you take, like, three or four and bend them together. And they t- and make a claw of death. Yeah. It's and like, the, the chunks of skin are flying off their face. <laughs> so good. Like, she does get her vengeance. It's so good. Like, it's a good payoff. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Um... Uh, oh, wait, let me check the comments. I'm sorry, I was going to go to the comments and I got sidetracked. Let me check these motherfucking comments. Uh, so, uh, gr- golden grilled gold grilled cheese. <laughs> God, I want a grilled cheese now. Uh, says, James, have you made any wigs uh, that have appeared on Drag Race and other, on other queens or in other queens photo shoots? Um... Let's see. I have done a lot of wigs that Trixie Mattel has worn, like base wigs. The like I've done the base wigs for a lot of her. Um, as far as drag race goes, none that have appeared on the show yet from my actual wig brand. I did make mm-hmm. wigs for Trixie back in season seven that she did wear on the show, which I'm not proud of. Oh, really? 
You yeah. made weights for Trixie before come, you came to Drag Race? Yes, I was one Wait, of the- Wait, were in the same city. Yeah, I want the few people she trusts to call to like help her. So I came over and styled like five of her wigs before she left. Oh, wow. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> um, this, uh, our next one, our next comment is from Luciador, uh, who says, it's nice to hear about these, these films. I don't think it's one I've heard of before. I'm 22, stop bragging. <laughs> uh, but I suppose that uh, that's no excuse. That's exactly right. I'm 22 is no excuse for anything. <laughs> um, the only comparison I have for uh, is the name Foxy Cleopatra. Yes. Uh, who Beyonce played. And now I'm wondering if that was a reference. Of course, that was a reference. There was two major characters that, I mean, I think Foxy Brown was Pam, Pam Greer's probably most in, most infamous character, uh, at least at one point. And then there was Cleopatra Jones, which yes. is another actress played by, you know, another character played by another actress, but uh, in the same era. I think it's Tamara Dobson. She's from Baltimore, Baltimore actress. I think it's Tamara Dobson. Okay. Wrong. And and so the, obviously they just took those two names and combined them for, for um, uh, Austin Powers. Yes. And so that's definitely... I will say, like, Cleopatra Jones is interesting because it was different from Foxy Brown in that it was actually a big budget movie. Yeah, like you a, could tell, and you can tell. Oh, that yeah. That car alone. <laughs> that car alone with a little window for her afro. Yes. <laughs> Shelly Winters is the lesbian, like, villain. So good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was not quite a black exploitation film, or it was, but it was like, you know, high, high, highfalutin. Um, I got a sequel, which I've never seen, and I cannot find it. Is a Cleopatra it. Jones sequel? Yes, it's called, like, The Temple of Gold or something like that. <gasps> Casino of Gold. Oh, my God. Girl, I gotta find this. Now, uh, Raif, we have to put this on the on the list, darling. Um, so does this movie hold any relevance to today? In um, your mind? I would say, as far as, like, the plot goes... It is definitely entertaining, and that was, was, that should be what it's taken as, is entertainment. What mm -hmm. it meant holds meaning. The fact that Pam Greer was such a major star and had so many different vehicles written for her and she starred in them, that, and, like, I feel like Pam Greer doesn't get praised enough. Like, At all. No. One of the things I did, like, was while researching this movie before I got on, I didn't realize she's one of the first Black actresses that starred in, like, a comic-to-film movie. Friday Foster was a comic before that, so she's one of the first to do that. And no, oh, wow, I didn't even know that it was a comic. Yes. Friday Foster was a comic book. Yes. Oh. <laughs> James, coming with the knowledge. I'm a movie buff of you know nothing but useless knowledge about actresses. <laughs> you know about your ingenues, don't you? I do. Um. <laughs> How? Oh, oh, go ahead, go go. <laughs> oh no, I was like, I just, I was just to finish my point, it's like. With Pam Greer and black exploitation films in general, like what I think is amazing about them and the, how it's sustained for so long is the fact that when these came out, they were dismissed as garbage cinema that only a select audience is going to see as a quick cash grab. And they've really been preserved and kept because it just means something to see, you know, people projected on screen and given the treatment of a movie star. And these were important movies because you didn't see that. And sure, Pam Greer was never like Farrah Fawcett, like famous, but to, Af to the black community, she was. Like she was a major star and still is. And I feel like that is important. I remember, that. I remember watching an interview with Pam Greer on the RuPaul show on VH1, um, like the RuPaul, you know, her interview show. Um, and Pam Greer was on there with little Kim and uh, one of the things that she said that I thought was really interesting was that she was, from her perspective, with Foxy Brown uh, and other movies that were these black exploitation films, she was really trying to bring sort of the frustration and the angst of women, but people in the community, women in the community, um, you know, who felt like they didn't have a voice. And there was there was a lot of crime and moments that were people were getting taken advantage of. I remember the quote that she said, she was like, you know, if you are a black woman and you have, you know, five kid, five dollars in your purse and five kids to feed, then ain't nobody going to take your purse. And you're going to, you know, you're going to do what you have to do. Turn a hanger into a claw and claw their face out. 
And so I remember thinking like that was just something really admirable about that, <laughs> not clawing people's face out, but you know, <laughs> taking that sentiment and wanting to bring it into the mainstream as best you could. Yeah, um, superhero, like Pam Greer is a superhero. Yeah. You can't I, deny that. I started this show because a, not a lot of my friends, enough of my friends, in my opinion, were were watching engaged, seemed to really connect with black art, black cinema, black films. Um, you know, when I when I was at the at least you know I was wanted to go see film, they didn't want to come. So that's why I started this. So how important is it? Uh, do you think it is seeing black, seeing and supporting black films and black art? I think it's very, very important. And I think it's great that you have this show where you can discuss the history of it and see how far we've come. Because black exploitation, again, was an evolution of, you know, Filipino exploitation films that were made over there. And it finally came over to America. And like just it, so many different gates opened because of black exploitation films to allow us to have explore so many different stories from so many different walks of life. And it eventually, in the 80s, we saw that shift and... I think it's great that you have this show that discusses just how far we've come and how brave it was to tell some of these stories, even though some of them maybe not have aged the best. That's just history. You have to accept that. Mm -hmm. Well, this, well, Foxy Brown has definitely aged. I mean, you're right. She drops the <laughs> F bomb more times than she ever needed to, but she makes up for it. If we're going to be petty, she makes up for it in her fashions and her like just like just pull she pulls a pistol out of her hair yes and shoots somebody with it it but, but she 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 takes she cuts off somebody's genitalia oh my and God. puts it in a jar and while the while the woman is <laughs> the pettiest speech in it's film the, history yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the pettiest revenge ever it's the pettiest revenge ever um <laughs> Okay, so we have a we have a comment here. Um, let me read it. The comments. Okay, the comments say, "Oh snap! I keep losing the comment page. My nails are longer now than they need to be, and I can't control as much as." Uh, Barricade says, "James can turn any wig into something sickening, like the most rattiest, nastiest lost cause. Please dump and spit and burn oh, wigorama." <laughs> And James turns it into a runway re ready piece of art. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. Behind the ditzy. It's fine. Behind, <laughs> <laughs> Behind the ditzy queen is a well spoken and interesting person. I definitely agree that your James is well spoken. And that, you know what, to, 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 to uh, Barricade's point, uh, thank you for the comment, Barricade. Um, <laughs> And first of all, those of you that have seen um, Foxy Brown, the movie, can you please put um, coconuts in the, coco put some coconuts in the chat and I'll, I'll look for coconuts and read your name aloud if you've seen it. Don't just be putting coconuts just because you want to bet your name on the thing. Um, <laughs> I, I have to say of all the queens, and I, I want to um, um, tread lightly here, but of all the queens on our season, uh, the way that things played out, I have to say, you are definitely one of the one of the queens whose talents and skills we never got to see. Now that that would have been true of anyone who who was first eliminated, but you know you are an absolute wealth of knowledge, and I really respect your respect for our industry. I I I appreciate it, and I and I see your respect for our industry, the art of drag, and the fact that you recognize that there's a connection between what we are doing today and what was done in the past. And I think that's something that a lot of people just feel like, oh, I have an Instagram account and I'm just gonna look cute. And the, the, the most that they'll connect to anything of drag history is like, oh, you're the detox of this season, like whatever, you know, like taking an archetype or taking, you know, like a little sort of um, stereotype of what somebody is and saying that, that's who you are if you look, if you wear the same types of outfits, not realizing that there is a deeper person behind there. And so I really do appreciate what you do for, for our industry. 
Oh, thank you. I got like, as far as like the show and everything goes, like I don't hold any ill feelings towards that. The way I always describe it is they didn't see anything in me then. And that's fine. You know, that's up to me to show the world what I can do. And you can't hold anyone accountable for that. That was just what how it played out in that moment. And I would never dismiss drag in general because I was sh like hurt by it because life shafted me with it. You don't do that. Like it was always so important to make sure that names are remembered and that people don't vanish because queer history is hidden from us all the time. There's so many names in drag that we don't hear that should be spoken aloud. And so many people whose stories have been tarnished because of word of mouth, like just for example, like Crystal LeBeja for years was written off as just, you know, an angry queen when there was so much of that girl's story that was not told and is finally getting spoken aloud now. So like, it's important that we remember this stuff. And it's important you remember it the way it actually happened. <laughs> That's the truth. Honey, you better preach. Preach it out, James. <laughs> um, okay, so just another reminder. Before the show, we talked about J the worst meal that James ever made, her biggest pet peeve, and what James wishes hadn't been edited out of Drag Race. Uh, also, what kind of queen she is. Um, James, I want to say thank you again for everything for for coming here it was short notice because we had a little <laughs> bit of a scheduling mix up and I, and you came through and saved us thank you so much for everything that you've uh done again for our community and for the art of drag uh thank you in advance for all the wigs that you uh will continue to make and thank you for coming and being a guest on our show oh my goodness it's such a pleasure to be here and see you again peppermint oh my god <laughs> all right thanks so much everybody do not forget to uh, follow James on her YouTube channel uh, and her wig business, James Mansfield Beauty. Thanks so much, James. It is now time to segue to our skincare and makeup segment, my favorite products of the week. Lip poppers, pop it like it's hot with these loose ultra reflective biodegradable glitter available in three shades with a pop-up glitter adhesive included. So we got a little video and we will show you now. I'm gonna try it on. Mm-hmm. It comes with basically a sort of a cream, um, you know, uh, sort of a cream underneath. It's two parts. You, it has like a lip balm, but it's actually a lip balm um, that you can put on and uh, it doesn't come with a tool or anything. The lip balm is quite sticky. So be ready. And I think a little bit goes a long way. So you put on the lip balm. Mm, 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 mm. And then the lid uh, unscrews and it reveals your biodegradable glitter. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of glitter on the lips. I think it it looks, I love the way it looks. I there, There's nothing like glitter look on your lips. But I hate the way it feels. It's like, I guess it's kind of an exfoliant. But I don't like it. Um, and so I'm going to try it on my lips. Now, I have no mirror. So I don't know what this looks like. Y'all have to tell me. I look crazy putting this on my lips. Mm, I just inhaled it. Mm. Do I look pretty? <laughs> Do I look pretty? No. Let me see. Let me look at this damn thing. Let me get my mirror. Mm. Oh, that's not bad. All right, y'all. I'm not mad at it. What do you think? Oh, okay. This is pretty. All right. And you don't have to reapply. That's the, that's the cool thing about if you have glitter on your lips, it'll last all night. You don't have to reapply. So that is the uh, lip poppers um, from Sugar Rush from Tarte. Uh, and it's $19 there. And that's that's actually not bad because you would play, you'd probably pay around $19 or $20 for any other lip uh, product or lipstick or anything like that. And so I think it's pretty good. Thank you so much to Tarte Cosmetics and the Sugar Rush uh, lip poppers. Mm -hmm. um, just to recap, if you are just joining us, you late. <laughs> so head over to my Patreon to see everything that you just missed, Biatch. And next week, I'm going to be singing a song. Guess what, bitches? Next week, I'm going to sing a song in the beginning and the end. Like right now, I would be singing a song, but I don't have it ready. Um, 
Now it is time, though, for us to pick our song, our song of the week, our movie of the week. And our next week's guest is Willem. Let me get the uh, wheel ready. Um, okay. Let's see. The, ch the choices are Moonlight. Oh, who did I say the guest was? Did I say Willem? <laughs> I meant to say um, uh, Moonlight. Hold up. I'm doing too many things at once. Shush sh sh your mouth. Moonlight. Okay. So the choices are Moonlight or Waiting to Exhale. Let's spin this mug. Okay. Spin. Here we go. Let me turn up the brightness so you can see. Can you see it? It's you probably can't see it that well. Okay, here we go. Spin. Oh wait, I'll turn up the thing so you can hear the sound. Do it again. We gotta spin it so you can hear the sound. Wait. I don't know why I'm obsessed with that sound. I'm so sorry, y'all. Waiting to exhale. Is it backwards? Can you see? Can you read it? Who cares? Waiting to exhale. I made too much of a thing of that. Sorry. Waiting to exhale is next week's movie. And next week's guest is Trace Lissette. So make sure you watch our, our next movie beforehand. So make sure you watch it like now or tomorrow after you watch Foxy Brown. Uh, thank you all so much for watching the show. I am so excited for some new guests that we have um, to announce. We got some fabulous celebrities. And again, if you watched last week, thank you so much for tuning in. So sorry for uh, the testicle difficulties that we had. But that episode from last week with John Cameron Mitchell, where we review and talk about Watt Stacks, is up on my YouTube page for all to see. In the meantime, have a wonderful week. My name is Peppermint. Thanks again to Mitch and Raif there. Thank you so much. Let's come on the screen and say goodbye, please. Just wave. Okay, I'm sorry. Mitch, you should always have it set. <laughs> Don't be mad at me, Mitch. Never mind. Forget it. We'll do it next week. Mitch, you're making a thing every week. You better have four. You might as well have four slots. We didn't have four slots. Anyway, thanks so much, everyone. Um, and I love you. And I'll see you next week.